What's going on guys? Welcome to part two with this mono black devotion deck, uh, specifically without Cauldron Familiar. Obviously that was been uh, that has been banned in the last week. Uh, and so we're trying out, see how it does. Uh, so far we are two and one. Uh, so did fairly well in video one. If you didn't check that out, I highly encourage you to do so. But I really do like this deck. I think it's sweet. It's um, very, very grindy. Uh, without a doubt, uh, but that's kind of the whole point like you you grind your your opponent down point by point uh, With things like underworld dreams and of course serrated scorpions and things like that um, And then you just get to bring it all back uh, And then hopefully do it again and then eventually hit them with a gray merchant which we actually haven't played yet uh, In all three games we have not played a gray merchant, but hopefully we can do that this time. So I'm excited. I like this deck Hopefully it works out our opponent being a bit slow and that's okay um, yeah, let's see. Opponent being very slow, as it turns out. I never really play with the little pets on the sides, but hey, look at that. <laughs> um, hello. I'll, I'll be nice. Let's see what they want to do. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's do that let's start with the scorpion because the full mire knight obviously we can draw later in the game if we need to um and we may not but we'll we'll figure that out that's pretty good uh let's attack in here play the scorpion and we'll play the cottage uh unfortunately we don't get any value off of this but we do need to hit our land drops one more would be great uh because it just means that we've got underworld dreams set up this is going to be a very tough matchup though given that this is uh blue white flyers um we generally have a very rough time against flyers decks uh just because we really don't have a ton we can do against them um other than drag to the underworld which is like a four of in the deck but that's it um, so hopefully they also get to mitigate the damage with healer's hawk pretty well so that's kind of a problem uh, we'll do this uh, and we'll attack all here that's fine if they kill these that's just stuff to pull back with call all right uh, we're probably just going to keep playing these Underworld Dreams, to be honest. We kind of just need to get as much of the, that down as possible, because that's going to be what kills them quicker than anything else. Yep. Very, very good. Also very good. Okay. Uh, yep. Um... 100% just going to do this again, because we're not doing anything else. <laughs> Um, play another Underworld Dreams, and again, we're probably just going to lose out of uh, sheer, the ability flying is very difficult for us to deal with, so that's fine. Watcher of the Spheres is super, super good, um, and this Imperion Eagle means that these guys are really mitigating most of the damage that we're doing. Yeah, all right, we lose. That was a quick game. Um, that's fine. I, these Flyers decks uh, got a lot better with Corset 2021, um, and unfortunately that just means that I think this deck needs a little bit more that it can do there, but um, that's okay. Let's jump into game two. Hopefully we'll have better luck in game two, games two and three. Uh, Again, this deck is meant to grind out the opponent, so anything very aggro-focused, um, if it's in the skies, is going to be really difficult to deal with. Anything like mono-red, we have a better chance against, because um, we can just kind of block for days, and that's fine. Uh, yeah, this is a great hand. We have the Archfiend's Vessel turn one, and then we have our choice of either Meyer, Trident, or Tamaret uh, turn two, which I really like. Uh, looks like we're against a very similar deck. Um, in which case, Tamaret might be the way to go. Um, so let's go ahead and throw that out there. Solely because we're going to want to exile their stuff, like, pretty quickly. Oh, it's a mutate deck. Okay. Well, didn't see that coming. Um, let's do this first. If they want to block, that's great. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and kill this. 
Um, that's not the biggest threat in the world, but it's a life gain engine for them, and we can't really let them have that. Interesting. Okay. So, let's attack in again. I'm surprised they didn't block that damage, but sure. Um, let's do this. We're going to do Menace and Lifelink, I think. And play another vessel. All right. Uh, they can block or mutate onto this all day. The reason that Grim Dancer we gave it Menace in particular was so that it can still get in some damage. Uh, the fact that you can choose what goes on this is really, really good. Um, just because it's such a high value card. Uh, what are we wanting? Honestly, don't know. Um, Great Merchant would just be great. Just hit him for a lot. Okay. I saw Umori, or excuse me, I saw this and thought this was not Umori. I thought that was uh, Luris, which was my mistake, but. Okay. That's fine. All right, so let's do this. Whoops. Uh, like I said, we kind of want these vessels in the graveyard, so if they want to block those, that's 100% fine. They can't block this, which is important. Looks like they're not willing to. Get Scorpion and Mire Triton down. Get rid of a couple lands on top, that's great. Um, and very soon we'll just start eating stuff from their graveyard too. That's very good against us though, I will say. Ooh. Doubly good. Yeah. They're gonna get pinged for two there, but that's still solid. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, we play that. Alright. Attack here, attack here, and attack here, I think. Does that make sense? Uh, we could also attack here. They do have to double block it, so if they decide to, we just get to kill this. Which I'm super fine with. And obviously, if they don't, they get hit for a lot, so that's great. Um, chances are they get to kill something here with the Hemophage, though. Um, we don't have a card to discard, so that's fine. <clears throat> kill Meyer Triton, sure. Alright. Um, yeah, I mean, we play this out. Not much we can do other than that. Uh, we do get to eat at least a card from Graveyards do that. Gain a couple life. Uh, I think we do this, right? Because then they have to double block and they take two. Doesn't matter how this gets killed. Now they take one and die. Sweet. Well, that was an efficient game. That was great. I was really considering not attacking there, but I think that obviously that was the right thing to do. Sweet. All right, let's jump into our last game. These go on fairly quickly. Um, so what? We're one and one this video, so one more. We'll see how we're doing. We are three and two overall. I like that. Um, also, just want to mention our JDC stuff. Uh, I, ha I tried not to talk about it intentionally over the last couple videos, but we're actually getting to a point where we're going to be spouting out a little more information for you guys very soon, and I cannot wait. I am so excited. I think it's going to be a really fun time. Uh, the lineup is just about finished, um, and we are in the process of getting a lot of the graphics and stuff like that made, so we'll do a more formal announcement very soon, but that is going to be happening on the uh, 21st of September is going to be the start of all that. This is going to be such a good time. I cannot wait. Uh, Underworld Dreams, again, going to be great here. Um, I find that card to just be generally very good. Let's attack him. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this here. Kind of just want to get up to a really good Grey Merchant, I think. Um, next turn we get Underworld Dreams down, potentially, uh, and I will 100% block this thing if it ever attacks. Oops. 
Yes, kill it. Kill it with fire. That card is way too good for us to not kill. Um, granted, I know we've got Drag to the Underworld, but I think we want to save that for these flyers in particular. Chances are this gets countered, I think. But I, I think it's worth trying for it. Um, if they counter it, that means they're probably not playing much else that turn, so that's probably worth it. Um, they could also just like Brazen Borrow it and tempo us out a little bit, but... Let's attack in. Okay. And this just devalues these Spectral Sailors. They draw cards, but then they have to take damage to do it. Um, this also really, really makes Grey Merchant good. <laughs> like, stupid good. Sure. Do I want that on the top of my deck? Yeah, I'm actually okay with that. Uh, let's attack in. See what they do. We'll play out a scorpion, and we'll just leave up the drag. Um, and see what they do. They're not really doing a ton, I will say. Okay. Sure. Yep. Honestly, though, we're not in a rush to pull that trigger. Um, let's attack first. We'll just play this Volmire Knight out. We kind of need to break this race. And we'll play this. And we'll pass. <laughs> Depending on what they do, we'll drag. That's fine. They're helping us tremendously by doing that, so that's fine. Um, yep. They have done very little this game. They're not attacking either. Let's just see what happens. Let's do this now. This is a spell they might want to counter. Okay. Looks like not. Let's Grey Merchant. I'm expecting a counter at some point. Yeah, okay. I was assuming that they, that needed to happen at some point, so... Uh, let's attack. That's fine. They're doing this very defensively, so that's totally fine by me. And we have a call in our hands, so, like, we just get it all back. Um, we're also very ahead in the damage race here. Now. So, uh, the Serrated Scorpion is even better, just because it's difficult for them to do anything about. Um, if they kill it, we just deal two damage, which is pretty crucial in their position. Get these guys back. If they counter it, they counter it. That's kind of fine. Oh, that was kind of backwards. I should have put the... Well, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Oh, nice. Like, that's good, because um, I guess they could counter it potentially on the way back down, but we do just have, like, a really strong presence at the moment. Um, so it's not really the worst thing in the world. We just attack with everything. They can't really block a scorpion. Okay. Anything they block here is not good for them, like, at all. That's fine. It's the most tempo-y tempo game I've ever seen. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, okay. We got there. That was nice. Um, all right, so overall, four and two uh, record with this deck. I really like it. It is very grindy, um, and it struggles against flyers. I think there needs to be something there that really helps it against flyers because, unfortunately, oh, that's nice. Uh, we really just, whoops, we really just didn't have much tech against them. Um, we did, of course, have the drag to the underworld, which is helpful. Um, but, you know, against a blue-white flyers list where they're going wide, 
one removal spell isn't un is unfortunately not going to get you there. So I like this deck a lot. I do recommend it. I think it's still very, very good without the Cauldron Familiar. It does just a decent job, but uh, it has a very glaring weakness, which is that Flyer's Point. So let I, I think we ought to play with this deck, maybe see if there's something we can do here that would help. Underworld Dreams, amazing card. Absolutely love it. Uh, and really, the rest of the deck is super, super good. We didn't actually get to do the Great Merchant play, but we tried. Uh, so I really like this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below if you did. And of course, subscribe if you are not already. We will have another giveaway coming out very soon on our Instagram. So stay tuned there uh, if you're not already following us and you'll see that coming up. So thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next gameplay video.